Forkmaster Theories! Hello everyone and welcome to Forkmaster's blog for the Warhammer for the Gaming System created by Games Workshop based in the UK and welcome to this Forkmaster Theories episode number 5 Today I'm gonna be looking into the mystery that is called the Dragon of Mars which is a mystery entity that first appeared in the novel called Mechanical written by Graham McNeil, which I have reviewed in an earlier video, so you can check it out more thoroughly. And just like in that old uh, video, I'm wearing red hair to represent my uh, Mechanicum uh, connection. So, the mystery was first mentioned in here with the description of the Noctis Labyrinthus. There, the landscape fell away, appearing to crumble into a series of maze-like canyons, steep walled gravens and shadowed valleys. Said to have been created by volcanic activity in Aeon's past, this was the Noctis Labyrinthus, a dark -net region of steep valleys whose depths were never warmed by the sun. As Dahlia, the main character from, one of the main characters from the Me Mechanicum novel, and her co-workers tried to use the machine called the Akashic Reader with the help of an empath called Jonas Miles. Uh, the power income is too high for them to handle and jo Jonas is bombarded with warp energy from the Astronomicon. Before his obliteration, Jonas says he has seen all the knowledge in the world, in the universe, and this is where he uh, says to be quoted I've seen the truth and I am free, I know it all, the emperor slain the dragon of Mars, the grand lie of the red planet and the truth that will be, that will shake the galaxy, all forgotten by man in the darkness of the labyrinth of the night. Uh, this is also the main plot from the 40k novel called Titanicus, when they managed to turn a huge titanic huge titan uh, warfare fight, uh, they managed to find an old scripture when it says that Mechanicum is more or, like, more or less based on a lie, they are not worshipping a, 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 a technic, uh, techno god. It's also uh, mentioned in the small bystand in the novel called Dark Apostle, written by Anthony Reynolds, when an uh, Magos or the Mechanicum is captured by the word, word bearers, and he says when he wants the Magos to apprehend his uh, cogwheel of the Mechanicum, uh, as he should know they aren't actually worshipping a techno god, they are hinting that they are worshipping something else. But anyway, so this is uh, so. That is the first proper mention of the dragon in the Mechanicum novel. When she later tells about this to the others, it is only then that she confirms the location of the Noctis Labyrinthus. They give the further description of it being a broken legion between, between the Tarsus uplands and the valleys. It is an abandoned supposedly as the fortress were plagued by technical problems and the adepts claim the region was imminent Immunical to the machine spirits. Dahlia later talks about the typical stories about dragons from Old Terra, uh, where the, about knights in shining armor who slayed the dragons and rescued maidens from their grasp, and that they were symbolism for the coming of the emperor and the light to overcome the darkness. The meaning is that the slayer symbolizes some all-powerful godhead and the dragon represents dangerous forces of chaos and disorder. Later when they draw the comparisons between the old Norse mythology about four and the other Norse gods, as Dahlia says, in Revelati Draconis the writer describes a dragon slain by the sky god with a thunder weapon to free the waters needed to nourish the world. Another tale speaks of a murdered serpent god, goddess who held mysterious tablets and whose body was used to create the heavens and earth. The conclusion they all make is that the dragon is, isn't killed in any of the stories, but is used for the good continued existence of the world 
they, that the dragons are still of value to the people. It, it's the eternal struggle that is the importance, not the victory in itself. It's a power balance that needs to be evened out. They make comparison that we can't have summers all year because that would burn us out and the winter would freeze us all to death. There is apparently a cult that worshipped the, the dragon, simply called the cult of the dragon. And it's described as an obscure sect filled with, with madmen. As they finally end up in the cavern of the dragon, they come across an adept called Semyon who shows her the mark of the dra dragon, described as a shining electro of a diminishing, diminishing sp spiral with a stylist set of wings to either side. He introduces himself as the guardian of the dragon. He explains that the dragon is more or less all around them in the, their, that cavern. Uh, he continues to explain the tale of the emperor and his battle with the dragon, which closely closely resembles the story of St. George and his battle with the dragon on Old Terra. As the Emperor is unable to fully destroy it, he subdues it for the future use. He then brings it to Mars to chain it into the labyrinth. Samyun continues with saying the Emperor sees things as others do not. He knows the future and he guides mankind towards it. Towards it. Seeding a, pre a prepared prophecy here, and push of humanity's understanding of science and mastery, and working towards a union between the forces of Mars and Terra, with the Emperor as a divinity uh, for whom they had been waiting for centuries. One can say the Emperor orchestrated the evolution of the Mechanicum as he knew that one day he would need such a mighty organization to serve him. And from the dragon's dreams came the first machines of the priests of Mars. Without the dragon there wouldn't have been any Mechanicum. And without the Mechanicum, the, Emperor grand, the Emperor's grand dream of a united galaxy for humanity is, have, would have withered out. In the epilogue of the novel, it is said that it could be around 10,000 years for the next Guardian to come. And the problems that would arise now is the book which contains all the knowledge about the dragon has gone missing. This implies that the Guardian and Unguardian is selected every 10,000 years or so. And there would be approximately around 3 Guardians prior to Dahlia's arrival there. Uh, so, now we can go into some uh, other information uh, about this. It's, it's, it's uh, first mentioned in the 3rd edition Necron Codex, uh, as we begin with the introduction with the talk about the Omnissaya being a god of the Mechanicum, and it ranges between some believing it to be the god emperor, others to think it's another deity. But it is mentioned that it's a far older power than residues on Mars, on the following page after that we get the line The wall moon shall bring forth the dragon. Further upon it, it is written that five Necron ships were on their way to Mars and one of them even managed to land on their sacred lands but they were stopped at, uh, at the famous Noctis Labyrinthus, the famous mage who was uh, many times and was mentioned many times in the novel called the Mechanicum. In the visions of the sleeping god, we, the maze is again mentioned when Abaddon the Despoiler seeks the knowledge from a demon who, who, to know what resides of the darkest parts of Mars which, which again, the Noctis Labyrinthus is mentioned. Uh, and the, the, the following parts which I will talk about now comes from the Lexicanum page, but uh, I've checked out the, uh, the source material where, and so that the sources are correct. So, so some people are very uh, suspicious when it comes to uh, Wikipedia's like Lexicanum. But uh, just you know that I, where I got my source material to look at. Uh, but in, in Mechanicum, we have the Guardian Semyon asking Dahlia uh, whether the others, the others, 
have already devoured all the stars. This is a possible reference to the C10 and their star eating tendency. The C10 are the star gods which the Necrons follow. Dahlia recognizes the dragon to be uh, an incredibly old, powerful, exotic life form which had brought entire civilizations to, into existence and then snuffed them out on a whim. This could be interpreted as a reference to the Seaton's relationship to the Necrontier slash the Necrons uh, and their race of beings. In the memories of the Dragon of Mars, uh, it is said that uh, it waged a war against its own kind, which left it in a weakened state, so the dragon hid on Terra. This could possibly refer to the old canon materials which state that the Cetans uh, warred amongst themselves, or possibly po the post-retcon uh, about the Necron uprising against the Cetan. In the description of the dragon, it is stated that his breast, its breast sh shone with the light of the stars uh, he had devoured. Also, once again, possibly a reference to the Cetan's role as devouring entities. Uh, during his fight with the Emperor, the, the dragon's scales are being described as silver in color, harder than steel and yet rippling with li liquid mercury when it uh, struck, uh, when struck hard enough. This is very similar to the necrodermis which the Cetan bodies are made from. And since the Necron's codex were last updated, uh, it was recon retconned that the Cetans were all powerful, uh, and, but instead, uh, after the uprising of the Necrons, they were destroyed into small shards that the Necrons could use for their own will. So, with all this in mind, my theory is that I believe that sometimes in the beginning of our time counting, uh, sometime after the birth of Jesus, one would say, uh, emperor, the Emperor came across the, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the shards, or the only shard of the Cetan god Void Dragon, which he subdued uh, in a battle of wills and placed upon Mars for the Mechanicum to be created from. This sounds more believable with the new lore, since prior to this I would believe the Void Dragon would be too powerful for even the Emperor to handle. I believe then that he draws an individual to become the Guardian for the next 10,000 years. Uh, as we have seen in mo many of the 40k novels is that uh, even though the Emperor is described to not be a god entity, he does have powers which we cannot understand, which, uh, I, which I would be believe this is one of them. And during the Horus Heresy, the book containing the knowledge about the dragon is lost, most probably taken by someone, which will have some Se severe consequences in the present time for the K universe. Uh, since both the Necrons and Abaddon seek out the shard uh, of the dragon on, on Mars, where probably uh, where only the Necrons were close to finding it. So that's pretty much more or less my theory about the, the dragon of Mars or perhaps the Void Dragon. Uh, so I hope that's cleared some things out for you viewers. Uh, but with that said, thank, thank you very much for watching this video, P don't forget to rate and subscribe my videos, please give a thumbs up, and also leave comments on things I'm doing good so we keep on doing them, and leave ne negative critique on things I'm doing bad so we'll either improve or remove the content entirely, and also don't forget to share this with your friends if it could be interesting, entertaining, or simply inspiring. But other than that, thank you very much for watching this Forkmaster Theory. Knowledge is power. Guard it well. Bye.